So the first time I moved into a property a fourplex, it was underperforming. And the easiest thing for me to do when I looked at it was say, hey, these units are under rented. The person that owned it just didn't raise rents for a long time. When you have really quality tenants, that might make sense. But if your property's not performing, it might be time for you to have those hard conversations. And when I moved into that property, we actually created an 18 month rental increase program that I had to let everybody know about and let them react to it, where we raised rent three times in 18 months. So essentially we raised rent right away. We raised it six, no, we raised it six months from when I sent the letter then at 12 months and then at 18 months to get the rents where we wanted them. And it was aggressive. It was like 70 to a hundred dollars a unit. That's shocking. A lot of tenants didn't love that. But as I was having conversations with people, they understood that their rent hadn't been increased in a while. And they understood that this property needed to perform for me to be successful at that. So like I said, you might have to have those hard conversations, but boy, did that investment look different after we were able to raise that income, right? And partner with doing some of these other tactics. The other part of how to raise revenue or income for a property. I've seen people get creative with separating out amenities. What do I mean by that? Certain properties have amenities like garages and storage and laundry. Okay. If these are common items around, I've seen people monetize these. I don't love this tactic, but it can be a tactic, especially if you set expectation for un upcoming people. So could the garages be a separate item if you have other parking where you can rent this unit for this price, but if you want the garage, it's an extra $75 a month, okay? Or if you want the extra larger garage, it's more, right? There's sometimes storage on properties. This doesn't have to be guaranteed for the people that are renting it. You can keep that locked and say, hey, we do have storage down the hall. If you need to use that, that's an extra $40 a month or $70 a month. And then laundry is if you can get the coin-operated machines, or more modern machines where there's pay, that stuff actually stacks up for the right, uh, if you're in the right building, right, right opportunity for an investment. So check into separating out amenities to create more income. The last one is the one, the last one for income increases is the one we've been doing a lot, which is we've actually been taking units that are empty and furnishing them and turning them into midterm rentals and short-term rentals. That's a whole nother topic that I'd be excited to talk about and we will get to. But you guys, this is an amazing way, pivot a pivot that investors are using to take their current units and really increase the cash flow on these. And usually it's just the pain of getting furniture, getting amenities to put in these, getting uh, furnishings, getting all the little things in the kitchen, you know, doing all those things to get a unit fully furnished. And then you can speak to a different audience, which is midterm renters, you know, 60 to more, you know, contract style work or nightly stays through Airbnb and short-term rentals. So you guys, that's the rundown on how to increase cash flow. These are just a few ideas, but I hope it got your mind working. Again, if you're getting into that house hack and it's not where you want it to be, as an investor, I want you thinking about these items.